So I think last time we did the physics of music class, I had a, a big snaky spring that we were shaking. I didn't bring that this time. Um, but we can look at the resonances uh, of the of the string. And whenever you know, whenever I talk about resonances, we talked about this last time, I always just look at the boundary conditions, right? So the boundary of the string is defined by the nut and the bridge. And the nut and the bridge for a, a string instrument are going to hold the, the, well, for these plucked string instruments and most bowed instruments as well, they're going to hold these um, relatively uh, stably, you know, secure. So re relatively fixed. All right, so we consider those to be fixed endpoints. All right. And then to find the resonances, all we do is we look at the sections of a wave. If I draw an example wave down here, where I have my equilibrium, we're looking for sections of a wave that fit those boundary conditions. So the lowest section is um, one, you know, two nodes essentially, uh, and an antinode in the middle. That would be our lowest resonance, all right, where this is the distance, this is the, the length from the, the nut to the bridge, all right. Then the next section that goes from the next wave, the next section of a wave that fits in here. This would be um, three nodes, all right, so a node right in the middle, okay. And then the next one would be four nodes. We have, well, let's try to evenly space them out. Okay. So this is the what we call the first resonance of a vibrating string. This is the second resonance of a vibrating string. This is the third resonance, and then this is you know my example wave, which I'll get rid of now. And we could go on and on and on. Uh, for most stringed instruments, you get you know 15, 20 odd resonances. You know uh, the higher frequency ones die out fairly quickly, so. It may be only the the first ten or twelve that that matter the most, but you know, in principle, there's uh, well, theoretically, there's as many modes as there are molecules in the string. Mm -hmm. Realistically, you know, uh, after well, realistically, you don't care at all about the resonances that have frequencies that are higher than what the human ear can hear. So then, the question is, how do we figure out what the frequencies of these of these resonances are. So I have some sort of upward bias today. I don't know what's going on there. Um, well, we, we do this by looking at what the, the wavelength is, right? So the wavelength, uh, here we have the, the length corresponds to half of a wave, right? This, would, this one here is one full wavelength, one full wave right here. This is one half of a wave. All right, so the second one here, L is equal to one wave. Lambda is the symbol we use for wavelength, All right? And then this one here, which I'm gonna redraw just because it annoys me. This one here, here's one wave and then another half wave. These should be evenly spaced. But L is essentially equal to, um, three halves lambda, because I have a wave and a half here. All right, now, the basic equation that we use for um, acoustics is that the wave speed V is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, okay? So if you knew what the wavelength, I'm sorry, the wavelength here is and the wave speed is, then you could solve for frequency, and frequency would just be, um, equal to v over lambda. Okay. Well then we should we, we have an expression here for lambda that we can solve and we'll get to that. But the question is what's 
What's V? Well, for a wave traveling on a string, the wave speed depends on how heavy the string is. The thicker the gauge of the string, the lower the frequency is. Okay, it also depends on how tightly wound it is. So if I increase the tension, it goes up. All right, so the higher the tension, the higher the wave speed, the uh, larger the gauge, the more massive the, the string is, the um, lower the, the, the string is, okay, or the lower the wave speed is. All right, so then <clears throat> um, there, there is a, an equation. I'm not going to derive it. I'll just give it to you. V is equal to square root of the tension divided by the linear mass density, which is the mass per unit length. All right, so if you know those two things, you can find out what V is. Okay, um, we'll assume that we can calculate that or that somehow we, we know that for any string if we, if we really want that because uh, tensions are something we can figure out and, and the, the mass per unit length is just something that the, it's a property of the, of the guitar string. It's not going to change. So then um, all we would need then is an expression for, for lambda for each of these. So what I do here is then I just solve these equations so then this expression here I'm going to rewrite as lambda is equal to 2L. Lambda equals 2L. Here we're already done lambda equals L and here the expression becomes uh, lambda is equal to 2L over 3. All right so now I have lambda for each of these three resonances and I can put that V is going to be the same for all of them, so I can put uh, lambda in here and I have an expression for the frequency of each resonance in terms of uh, V and, and L. And L is, again, the distance from the nut to the bridge, which shouldn't change. All right, so uh, we'll call this frequency up here F1. This is going to be V over lambda. Lambda is equal to 2L, so this is going to be V over 2L. This one, lambda is equal to L, so F is equal to, we'll call this F2, it's the second resonance. So F, V over lambda, so F2 is equal to just V over lambda. All right, and then here, let's call this F, F3, F3, V over lambda, lambda is 2L over 3, so this is going to be 3V over 2L. Okay, now uh, I want to use uh, one of my favorite math tricks in the world, which is that if you multiply anything by the number one, you haven't changed anything, right? Sure. Okay, so um, I'm going to multiply the, this expression here by one, and I'm going to do that by writing one as two divided by two. 2 divided by 2 equals 1, if I multiply it by, by 1. Okay, so I have 2 over, over 2, and I haven't changed anything. Okay, but uh, now if you look just at, I'm going to use a different color because I can. Uh, if you look at, at this part of the equation here, all right, well, this is equal to the frequency of the first resonance. This is equal to the frequency of the first resonance. So I can rewrite these frequencies in terms of the first frequency, right? So F2 is equal to 2 times F1, and F3 is equal to 3 times F1, right? So if you wanted to calculate the frequency of the fourth resonance, what do you suppose it would be? four times F1, yeah, the frequency of the first resonance, exactly. If you wanted to know the ninth resonant frequency, it'd be nine times uh, F1. Now, for a, a real instrument, the approximation that the wave speed doesn't change or that the, uh, the, 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 the length is exactly the same, or, or th those are um, not exactly true, but they're approximately true. So these are all, this is, this is a 
These expressions are all approximately true for all real stringed instruments. They're not exactly true, but they're very, very, very close.